Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just with the Portsmouth Football Club. It might be better for the police. No, I'm not interested in me. All right. Broadcasting from the depths of outer space. Hello, I'm alive. I don't know what's going on. By your command. Fascinating. God damn you all to hell! It's the Sci-Fi Podcast. And coming to you live from the far reaches of the universe, of time and space, other dimensions, other planets, the microverse, there comes a voice <laughs> in the night and a voice in the day. I present to you Michael Ball, Lord and Master of all time and space. You make me sound like a mix between a Time Lord and a Marvel superhero, I think, so I'm not sure about that. Hello, Martin. Oh, God, there. No, no. <laughs> sensitive about his Marvel stuff. I'm alright with the Marvel. I'm imp- I am improving. I'm going to watch some Marvel stuff. How are you? I'm alright. I'm, I'm meant to be going out this afternoon, but I don't know if I'm going to go out. Well, this killing me. Oh. Do you know what? I have to say, oh, got to, before we go into that, let me quickly say that the intro, which you've not heard yet, Martin, was a recent recording of a guy uh, from Portsmouth Football uh, Club knocking on my door asking for something. And I just shot him down in flames in about t- two seconds. I left it as an intro to this podcast because I just thought, oh, it was, yeah. I thought it was why funny. Was, why was there somebody from the parts of the football club? I, he never got a that. chance. He never got a chance to tell me. I said, I'm not interested. And he went, oh, OK. And then that was, that was like awkward silence. And then he went away and something. So I don't know why. But uh, I don't like uh, that thing. I don't like people on the door. Uh, let's go into this, though. Um, weather's been hot here. Really, really hot. And I have to say that um, since I've been down here, this last week or so, I think it's the warmest I've ever remembered it. It's been about 32 degrees. In London, it must be unbearable. What's it like where you it's, are? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> well, I've got a big fan and it won't be enough. So uh, at five o'clock last night, I got this urge to go up to Sainsbury's. Yeah. So I got on a bus. You had a bus? Got, yeah, oh, blimey. I, I, I jumped on a bus quickly. It's only around. I should have walked, really. Yeah, but the bloody no. bus broke down. I'm heated. Because the... Uh, the, the the air conditioning was on hot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the bus driver probably were complaining. That, and anyway, so like it broke down. So I walked. So anyway, I got to say, <laughs> right. I said I, I'm here for a fan. They said we sold them all. So I went to Argos in Oh said, God. They said they said we're not getting any more fans until Friday. And I thought, oh, come on, I need another big fan. So anyway, I got on the bus again. Oh right? what? And I went down to, to Westfield Shopping Centre, right. and the bus broke down. What? It broke down because the, the, the air conditioning knackered the bus, right? So, so you're saying, well, a, a second, big, a second bus, right. two buses broke down? Yeah, and eating went on, they couldn't get the air conditioning working. And the bus driver, he, he, he tried, he, he said, because he said, his cabin were all air conditioned. Is and it a double-decker bus? No, single decker. Single decker, right. And uh, he, he, he radioed in, and, and Guy said at radio place, he said, oh, just, he said, just keep them all on bus. And he said, if they want another bus, tell them to get off. So I stayed on, dying, and uh, oh. I, I jumped off into the shopping centre. I went to Argos. It was a queue two miles long. And you can only use two computers at a time in Argos. Oh, maybe, so I, I mean, I'm going to say, isn't it a bit dangerous, all this stuff? You're going, like, computer panels, heavily packed buses and stuff. Isn't it a bit unsafe? Are you wearing masks? Are they all wearing masks? Okay, what? Well, they were all wearing masks, but oh. I, you, what they do is they, they try to avoid use of the computer. What you do is you use your phone in front of the member of staff. Oh, so, like, you log in or something. and then Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So she said, oh, we sold out of fans, they're not getting any more till Monday. So I went into Lidl, they'd flogged them all, so I was, like, fuming at this point. And I, and I, I, was, I was just almost at home in defeat, and I saw the shop that sold crap. Yeah. You know, like pots Junk and shop, and yeah, 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 yeah. I went in, and said, have you got any fans? I've got a load of them, mate. Oh, what? So I've got two big fans on, and it's still not enough. Oh, mate. So what's the actual temperature up there? About 35 degrees, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's boiling up. And I'm meant to be going out today, but I, it's, it's, I, I, I just don't know if I can sit on a bus. Yeah, well, I'm surprised, you're going, I... I'm surprised you're going on buses. I wouldn't go on a bus for anything, but that's just up to me. I mean, like I well, said... Well, I'm meant to be going out, to, uh, uh, well, after the, straight after this podcast, actually, but I don't know if I'm going to go. All right. Because I don't want to get around the corner and soak it in sweat. You know what I mean? Because that's what it's like. I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's just you know. And then last night I couldn't sleep hardly. Yeah, I've had it hot last last night as well. Like I said, 
Um, but I have, I have plenty of sort of like lu- lukewarm showers that keeps you cool, apparently. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I've done a lot. Yeah. Of. But the two of them, they're, they're sort of adequate, you know. Yeah, but they wear. I mean, the showers only last for a little while, and then you get hot again. But yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, even by the seafront down here, I mean, it's so hot. Um, that I've not been comfortable about it at all. So, um, what what are the beaches like down there? Well, I stay away. Like I said, I'm being extra uh, careful. But um, when I have been down there, they've been pretty busy. And then you go to like places like Bournemouth, where apparently it's so busy that the police are turning people away, saying we're full, which is bizarre. So, uh, and to me, like I said, I, I, I'm not risking it. I'm, I'm taking this this all very seriously. Um, so I'll go in the garden. Luckily, I've got a garden, so I've got a place where I can be relatively quiet. Um, and relatively, um, hopefully, virus free and stuff like that. So. Well, I, well, I did think about going away next weekend, but I don't think I'm going to bother if it's going to be crazy next week. And it's bank holiday, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's a couple of weeks. Week. A couple of weeks. It's bank holiday, but yeah, it's. Um, I mean, I, I think the weather's going to change and the thunderstorms are going to cool down. I think tonight. I think they said uh, we're recording this on the Wednesday, the twelfth. If people are hearing it now, um, so um, hopefully by the time <coughs> people are hearing this, it's going to be a bit cooler. But, yeah, I have found it really quite tough. So, um, you certainly, at least you've got your fans. So, at least next year, if you get another heat wave, you'll have your, all your fans already and save you having to go on all the buses and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Martin's having a coughing fit, and now he's gone quiet. I've got coffee down back of my throat. Oh, dear. That's a blooper. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. You know when it goes down wrong pipe? <laughs> yeah, but it certainly did then, mate. Well, it's all right. Yeah, it did, yeah. Okay, well, sorry about that. Well, when you're ready to talk and um, we'll, we'll I'm carry ready, on. I'm ready to talk now. I'm ready to talk right, now. Right, let's go into the news and let's see what's been happening in the world of sci-fi this week. Here we go. Working. So in the sci-fi news. Okay, Martin, you said that you've heard some things. Tell me what you've heard from your perspective. I've not heard much my end yet. Uh, <laughs> Garth Davis to direct a Neutron movie with Jared Leto. Ooh. So, um, I did hear something about this. So, is it going to be just a reboot? It's not going to be a continuation or anything like that? Uh, I'm reading it now. Uh, Gav Davis will direct a brand new Tron movie starring Jack <coughs> Jared Leto in the lead role. It's been confirmed by Deadline that Calf will have a brand new Tron movie with Blade Runner 2049 Suicide Star Squad Jared Leto in the lead role, the franchise was last seen in 2010 with Tron Legacy right. and was originally met with mixed reviews from critics. However, in the years since it has quickly built up a cult. I like it. I like Tron Legacy. I thought it was a good I film. do a big fan of it. I thought it was very good. Of fans who love the cast, aesthetics and that truly iconic Daft Punk soundtrack, Garth Davis, best known for directing Mary Magdalene and the Oscar nominated Lion in 2016. No, well, I've never seen that. No, I don't know that. Is there any more? Oh, there's more. Deadline reported that aggressive pursuit of the film convinced Disney executives that he's the right director for the job. It's important to note that the film hasn't been completely greenlit by Disney, but the script has been written by Jesse Wigatow with Jared Letter produced alongside with Justin Springer and Emma Ledbrook. Uh, Tron Legacy director uh, Joseph Kaczynski had previously opened up about the possibility of a sequel, saying that he hoped Disney pushed forward with the franchise. Looks like he got his wish. Are you excited? Uh, are you excited for a new Tron movie? Yeah, well, if it's done right. I mean, um, the thing is, you never know until you start to see it whether it's going to be good. If they did it, I, I think it could be very good if they did it now. Um, rather than a, a continuation of the 80s original. Yeah, I, 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 I'm open to it. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like, but I, I did quite like Blade Runner 2049, so um, I think that's a positive aspect. So, yeah, I was, I was certainly interested in seeing it, and I think it's something which um, would be definitely worth uh, a good conversation or two. So um, it depends on how it's done. I mean, like I said, just because it's a f- familiar brand or something we're aware of, or whether it's going to be done good or bad is, is the question. Um, I've seen something on here just to, just to move on. Uh, apparently, there's a, there's a first look at Ridley Scott's new series um, called um, Raised by Wolves. Have you heard about it? Oh, I've yeah, seen pictures of that. And it says the future doesn't look so bright for HBO's Max upcoming dystopian horror show starring Vikings icon Travis Fimmel, Amanda Collin, Abu Bakr Salim, Winter McGrath, and Naomi uh, Algar. And uh, it says uh, the Raised by Wolves paints, paints a grim and disturbing vision of a mysterious planet where all is not as it seems. 
Um, written and created by HBO Max uh, streaming service by Aaron Go- Gozikowski. The show centers on two androids, father and mother, tasked with raising human children on the planet after Earth is destroyed as the uh, begoing colony of humans threaten to be torn apart by religious differences. The androids learn that controlling the beliefs of humans is a treacherous and difficult task. I don't know much about it, but it sounds bloody interesting. That sounds like that could be good. Uh, but I've only just started to hear about that one, so maybe that's going to be enough and coming big show. What else have you got, your end? Uh, big news. Christopher Eccleston to return as Doctor uh, Who. Yeah, I did hear about this. Very surprised. A new audio adventures. Yes, very surprised about that. That's a positive thing. Uh, of course, it's the... Um, the audio adventures, which are... I've never got into the audio adventures myself. Um, but I float in and out of them. It's... Yeah, I've got... I bought a few of them. Yeah, yeah, I have not heard one or two. I've heard one or two. Yeah. You've got a bit moved for them, I think. Yeah, well, I did have one. We had... Um, they had some anniversary one, and we, we drove down to Devon, and we put it on in the car. And that was quite good. It's good for, like, like driving trips and stuff like that. I could do that... But I'm to me, it's weird. It's it's a bit like animation. I, I'm more into uh, real uh, sort of live live action things with real people rather than either CGI or um, audio, as, as in this. One. But yeah, it's good. It's really good. Well, they're doing a big event with the big finish. It's called Time Lord Victorious. Right. It's massive event. It's, it's involving all the doctors. It's come out in comics, books, and but it's all focused on the big finish. Yeah, it's, it's something to do pre-time world. It's called Time Lord Victorious. Yeah, well, I, I think that's great. I mean, like I said, I am a Whovian, but I'm more just of the original series and the remake or the continuation, not remake. But I've yeah, got all the Black Seven ones. I was quite into them. But oh, okay. I've, I've still got to watch Black. I've got all the Black Sevens ready to go, but it's um, about three seasons long. <laughs> and I, I do remember watching when I was very young and, and remembering how... Um, I remember Servalan and I remember when the Liberator was destroyed with this... Okay, that was I don't like to talk about that. Don't you? Why not? Because they shouldn't have destroyed it. And well, then, uh, yeah, was... They shouldn't have destroyed that ship. Yeah, well, I agree I don't, that. I'll get into the old psychology of Black Seven why it annoys me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not no, going to no, go no. We, we are going to. What I'll do is, um, not yet, because we've got loads of other things, but we will do a show on Black Seven. Um, and before that, I will try to watch the whole series. Um, but it's quite. It's about three seasons. I could do it, though. I could do it. Um, it's four seasons. Oh, four, sorry. Four seasons. I've got them all anyway, ready to go. So um, I think that would, be, that would be a really good show, actually, to talk about. Um, uh, we since last week we seen the first episode of Lower Decks, the new Star Trek spin-off. Um, yeah, what, what were your opinion on that? I actually thought it was pretty good. Um, I, I thought um, I was looking at some other reviewers, some saying that they talked really, really fast and it was a bit manic. But in the end, it was a pilot, and and thing is, they're trying to establish the main characters, then go into the story. And I like the way that the fact it's quite it's quite clever because often in Next Generation DS9 and Voyager you'd have two concurrent storylines going in, in on an episode, and normally the important one is the factor and the smaller one is in the background. Whereas this one, it's because it's the lower decks, their story, which is normally not so important, is more to the forefront. And the bigger story with this one was with this um, uh, disease thing which was spreading around was was at the background. Um, I thought it was very good. I, I like the intro. I like the it's it's sort of comedic. It, it's trying to be a bit the Orville, I think, in some ways. Um, and it, but it to me, it felt more like '90s Trek in the way that it was all done. It didn't f- feel so far removed, i.e., from like Discovery and Picard. Um, I've heard that episode two is even better than episode one. So um, so far, it's a cautiously optimistic uh, perspective. I liked it. How about you? Uh, I went into it, well, I turned my lap and my computer on, and it was just playing. <laughs> just by oh, I don't yeah. know, I just appeared, it was like, it beamed in, it beamed decks, in, yes. I don't know no, where it comes from, know, I, no, it's no, like no. I've got a magic computer. No, I think, it, I think yeah. it's a your Harry Potter computer or something, it's magic yes, or something. Yes, yes, yeah. so I watched it, I, I, went, I admit, I, admit I, went, I went in with a bit of a negative attitude. Yeah. And I think within the first five minutes, I, I started to really enjoy it. Yes. Uh, I did review it. I, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was good, but and uh, I don't think people should be like knocking it at most. One episode, you know. I agree. I agree. You know, give yeah, it a chance. Gotta give it a chance. Um, I found it very relatable. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I, like I say, the only sort of animated comedy I've ever really watched is The Simpsons. 
Um, but for what it's for what it's worth, it had a lot of references to things that only Star Trek fans would would know. Like yeah. Gar- Gary Mitchell was mentioned. I think um, uh, Chad Each, Chad Each, Chad Each, yeah. which is the um, the Picard uh, war thing that they had, um, and all that sort of stuff. I loved. Um, and and, of course, I liked what they did with the Riker character where they turned him into a complete tosser. <laughs> Yes, I, I really well. did like that. I thought, and the, you know, I, I thought they, you know, this guy with his big ego and all this, and <laughs> I think they've got some at there. I think yeah. if they can keep it like that going, I'm going to give it five episodes. I think by then I'll know if it's crap or not. But I've, I, I'm not going to. Somebody said to me, I got a message. Yeah, you know, they were a bit wary about watching it. But I said, look, you know, it's one episode. In, uh, it's only 20 minutes it, of your life, is it? 25 minutes of your life. I mean, yeah, it's one that. episode. I think after about five to six episodes, uh, you know, I, I think you'll have a picture by the where it's going. But I think it's uh, a very promising start. Very good. Yeah, very promising start. So uh, I enjoyed it. Me it too. Me too. As well. Yeah. I like to, I'm definitely going to keep um, these episodes as well if I see them and stuff like that. So, um, yes. yeah, absolutely. So, um, it would be nice though if, if episode two appeared, like out of nowhere. Well, just... you never know. Like I said, it's something out of Harry Potter, something like Magic Wand might be cast on your laptop and suddenly it'll just go ping. So, hopefully. It would be like I just turn it on tomorrow morning and, and yeah, then, oh it, my God. Stranger it's things have happened. Yeah. Strange. I mean, <laughs> look at I mean, look at that thing. I mean, this isn't funny, but I mean, that, that explosion going off in Beirut last week. I mean, my God. God. It's like a, it's oh, like my a God. New... Do you know what, hey, right? The thing, this year, right? Say it. This year, right? It's so bizarre because, like, this year we are literally like we're in a Hollywood movie with all this stuff going on, right? And yet, the only thing that's not going on is Hollywood's closed down. It's like we've swapped swapped places. That thing last week looked like a nuclear bomb going off. It was incredible. Did you just see the guy swinging his thing in the church? He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And, then, and then the little cross, like the light on the, on the cross behind him goes ping, and then the, it starts to rumble, and then he, and he goes bang, and then as all the glass is coming down, he runs away straight into the glass, hitting his head. And I thought to myself, God wasn't being too kind to you at that point, was he, mate? No, no. I, I mean, I just, I, I just, when I saw that explosion, it was like right. You actually, it's. I it, thought it that's was in a the nuke. background. That's in the background of him being hit in the, with the thing. It's just been played in the background, just so you can actually yeah. hear. I'll just play it so you'll hear it on the replay. But what when, you got, when I it looked when like I a nuke. That. It looked like a nuke. Hey, yeah, I thought, my God, is that a, is that a mini nuke know, or something? I, it looked like I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, my God, I mean, it's like this mushroom cloud coming off it. Yeah, that's then, what I thought. Is that a nuke? And you saw it. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember the Terminator 2 when you see she has the Sarah has that dream sequence where the bomb goes off yeah, in LA? Yeah. And you see yeah. the wave and all the buildings sort of like crumpling. It was just like that. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, god. It's, I, I mean, I mean, apparently uh, there was some yesterday. Uh, oh. We are living in like this weird movie oh, at the moment, I know. It's, it's like and, it is, the, yeah. and we've got all the wrong people in charge of it. <laughs> we have. Uh, there was some. I'm not. I'm not getting on political. But That's there was what I'm saying. Do you want to go Trump, there? Do you want to go there? There was <laughs> something about Trump did this speech yesterday, and he turned down some about. The, uh, the the Spanish flu had killed, uh, stopped the Second World War or something, and they've all been. I mean, he came out with some speaks and like everybody just panned him yeah. for it because they got the dates wrong of you know these like global. No, events. the Spanish flu was in the ni- 19, uh, 18, 19, 19. It was in Yeah, the no, World but he thought it the Second World War. Oh, well, well even I knew that straight off as soon as you said. Yeah, that's right. I thought I'm sat there yeah, thinking, yeah. What and, and he's, a, he's, he's, he's the he's the president. I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and he said that the, then, he said the Beirut thing. He thought it was a bomb. He thought it was a terrorist thing at first. Well, I saw uh, there was a conspiracy uh, thing popped up on my Facebook that showed a picture oh. of a missile, and, and then lots of people said it's fake news. I thought, yeah, it no, is. No, it's I not. Mean, it was some chemical depot or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the ship, wasn't it? it was and it was some, some fireworks mix. went off near it, and it, it caught a light. It all went off. Yes, I mean, good God, I mean, it, it, it's, I just sat, I kept rewinding it. Do you know what? I must have seen about 20 different perspectives of that, and it sounds like it was sick. It wasn't, it was just so interesting, even though it was terrible. And like yesterday, yeah. I saw this guy, and this guy who was destroyed, he was standing up outside the rubble of his house, and he said that my wife is dead, and my two daughters are dead, yeah. and my life is over. And I thought to myself, you know, all the stuff that's going on, you know, in the end, it could be a lot worse. I mean, after all the, the COVID and everything over there as well, because it's there as well, and now uh, Beirut was practically flattened, at least half of it, or so this thing going off. 
Amazing well, time. Well, the entire government resigned. Right, I'm surprised. Oh, my God. Jane did... Oliver resigned. Yeah, well, they had to. They had to yeah. do that. I mean, they, they apparently have been there for years, just sitting there in this big warehouse of all these obviously volatile chemicals, right next to a, a, a fireworks factory or something. I don't know how it worked out. It was did crazy. The, and the sun has a camera. Oh, uh, there's some, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. You can look at the the, and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, and it and, and it's so a ten I minute thing. It's a ten minute thing. You watch it, and it's slowly the smoke builds up, and, and in the end, uh, and it's because it was like an automated camera, and he just sits there in a static position, and after ten minutes, uh, you see the fireworks starting to crackle, and you get the first rumble, and then bang, and it's just like, oh god. It's amazing. It's did, very, did you see the crater? Did you see yeah, the crater? I know. Yeah, it was, I mean, there was a satellite comparison to what it was like before. Yeah, it's just a, yeah. it was like the whole thing's full of the, the sea where the sea just flowed in, and it's, it's practically just changed the whole landscape for that part of Beirut because of the size. It's, it's incredible. Honestly, God. it was absolutely. It was yeah. just amazing. I don't know, but if this were a sequel trilogy of movies, are we, are we in the middle of it? Oh, well, I, I, I feel like we're no, living in a movie. Couple. I feel like it's a movie. You know? Yeah, but which, which? But I, I, we're obviously past the first movie. So are we in the second or the third? Oh, is it a trilogy? I... <laughs> oh, well, it depends on the number of spikes in the virus, I guess. Really. Um, well, apparently, Russia has a cure. Yeah, no, I'm, d- I'm dubious about that. I'm dubious about that. They've gone all the... They've done, they've done, it takes months and months of, of, of progress to, to check it out to make sure it works and it's... Putin, yeah, I saw, saw footage. It's only about a minute long, right? He said... Uh, he said... Uh, he said, uh, and my daughter, we gave it to my daughter and she's all right. I thought, what, you've heard, you put your kids on it? Oh, fuck yeah, right, you're right. I know, when I said that, all I thought was, I am legend, where, the, where um, <laughs> uh, we've got a vaccine for cancer and everything, and, then, and it works, it's great. And then, of course, it goes on like a year later when the whole world's falling apart. And everything oh, else. Planet of the Apes, the new one with that with the key off oh, and all. Oh, there was, I forgot about that one. Yeah, there was, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah. Good uh, point. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've got to see those again, actually, Planet of um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't take too much um, credibility in what they're saying over in uh, in Russia because uh, yeah. apparently there are Definitely. six there are six potential vaccines they're working on at the moment in, in the West. So, but none of those are guaranteed. But there's six good possible chances that at least one of those will will do what's needed to stop this thing. I cancelled so, the gym membership. I'm not going back. No, well, I don't blame you for that. No, I wouldn't do that. No. Cancel it for now, so I'm yeah. going to buy a walking machine. Oh, we've got one of those already. We've got a cross trainer. Plus, you go oh, for a walk right. every day, so um, we do the fitness <laughs> thing. But, no, I think another thing is gyms. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't want to go to a gym. Not going down, yeah. You know, um, but I mean, it was, it was funny. Not funny, but it was amazing that um, I didn't realise. I think, if I had mentioned this last week, but... I apologise, but when the original lockdown, before it went down, you remember it started about a week or two too late. And, yeah. um, of course, I'm near the football stadium here, and, and you know what I think about that. And they had one match, and they were shouting and hollering, as they always do. And then um, about, a, two, about a week or two later, um, we had 14 deaths in right in our local area. So I worked oh. out for 14 oh. deaths, it must have been hundreds of people if it's the usual ratio of one to two percent whatever it is that means that there must have been hundreds of people who caught it from that ma- match where they're all shouting and hollering and it just it just made me think how surprising it is that people uh in, a, in an environment like that when this was so serious that they all caught it and some people died because they didn't take it seriously you know what i mean but that's just yeah it. so yeah I, I i will share this podcast has kept me sane through all this <laughs> Uh, no, I'm being said it's the okay. routine of this every Wednesday has kept me. Yeah, sane. Well, I've enjoyed it as well. I mean, I've got to know you. Know, you and we've, we've had a good it's chat. It's like that one point in the week where, I, for an hour and a half, I get to be normal. Yeah, well, me too. It's nice to have a proper conversation. Uh, and plus, we're recording it and sharing it with the world. Uh, and it's you know it's, it's going to be funny lo- listening back to some of these old shows and uh, oh do you remember that and oh god remember how bad it was and what those you know it's good that it's, it's a good sort of recording of because you know we talk about stuff that you might forget about like i.e. like you getting on the bus trying to get the fans and stuff like that or me having an altercation with a little m- woman with a dog yap in it or something you know it's um it's good that it's good to, to good to do can that I, can i tell you something weird yeah go for it I fancy Victoria Stillwell. I don't know why, I just do. Who's that, Victoria Stillwell? Uh, do you remember, uh, 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 oh, God, uh, the dog or me? 
She she won these do- like she she carries like a watch. She's this like it's well she goes down to you know if you got a dog and it's like causing loads of problems. I've been watching it on on YouTube. And I've got her up she's like now. posh. Oh. And she, like, she whips this thing at the beginning and she's really sexy. Oh yeah. And, and, yeah I, I just yeah, developed yeah, yeah. this crush yeah. on the woman. I don't know why, but Victoria's still will come. We get married, please. <laughs> has she got? Yeah, she got a um. A Twitter account. Maybe you could actually uh, send a copy of the post uh, podcast postcard podcast and say, "Oh, I gave you a shout out at um, twenty minutes thirty two seconds or something." Will you marry me or something? You could do that. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, what, what about that? Uh, I've not heard of from Track Fun. Yeah, I've not. I sent him a message, um, Roberts, about uh, coming on. Um, he said he was interested, um, and I've not heard any further. So. Um, We'll leave it open um, if he can do so it. It must be if the five hours behind. Us, yeah, it must be yeah. Quick morning yeah. over there. But I mean, <laughs> I was going to say. I mean, when we come back to me going back to work in about three weeks' time, um, we'll have to. Unfortunately for me, uh, have to change the times that we're doing it. I mean, I do come home at lunchtime, so it's possible I could do the record if I get home about. I normally get home about this time, about half past eleven, twenty to quarter to twelve. We could do an hour. At where I'm at home, and then I can go nah, back to work. Well, if it comes to doing it at night time, because we've both got responsibilities. That's what so I'm saying. It, I'll, it I'll work out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll decide before. It won't affect obviously when it's re- recorded. Yeah, uh, and then we can probably squeeze them in then. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we used to. I mean, I've always done po- podcasts in the past uh, in the evenings until obviously we're at home so much. So yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll just work it out. As you say, we've both got our respective lives and stuff, so we'll we'll, we'll find um, somewhere in the middle where we can all do it, and hopefully Robert can do it as well. So, track fan sixty eight, um, yeah, the the option is still open for you, or the invitation is still open to you to join us and have a uh, I, get your perspective, and it would be good. I have more news which could be of interest. Okay, go for it. Disney just ended the twentieth century Fox brand. What? Yeah, why have they closed? They're, they're actually why? Well, is it because Disney just owns it, so they just don't think? Uh, New York CNN Business, 20th Century Fox, one of the most recognised names in the inten- entertainment oh, wow. business history is officially no more. Disney announced on Monday it would be rebranding one of its TV studios, 20th Century Fox Television, as 20th Television. Oh, because the Simpsons okay, runs on that. Fox the, the Century and the Fox from the studio's name. Twentieth Century Television, and of course the Simpsons and the Orville seasons one and two are on the Fox network, aren't they? That's, yes, they are. That's yes, a big. That's the, big news. That is. In the late nineties, somebody. This is the true story. Twentieth Century Fox. When it would, they were going to change it to Twenty First Century. I wondered that. I remember it. And I thought and it was, somebody it didn't. paid the fifteen quid for the the digital domain name. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, they yeah. They had to pay him off. They had to because they wanted it and he owned it online. <laughs> they had to pay him off. Wow. <laughs> but they didn't, to take but him they, did, God, they didn't change it though. But it still was Twentieth no, Century Fox. No, they never Fox. did. But they probably wanted to change it like later on. But well, they he got a lot of money out of them, didn't he? Oh, I'm sure he did. Well, I, I'm surprised. Well, that. that's very clever thinking. That's very clever thinking, actually. Um, I mean, you think about it a few years before the end of the 20th century. You think, oh, if I did that, because I was surprised that they didn't change. Yeah, so, that's the right. Because I thought to myself, that would be contemporary. It's, like, it's now the 21st century, 21st century Fox. And it never happened. I didn't know that. I didn't know that they were stopped. I, I, th- I think they, they changed their mind in the end anyway, partly because of this thing you just told me. But, yeah, hey, Fox going. Hey. That's, that's a shame. It says there, the well-known logo and title card, which has the words 20th century oh. television, stacked above spotlights, will stay the, stay the same, minus the exclu- uh, excluded words. The new logo graphics will appear on 20th television series starting this fall. 20th. All the titles will have already aired before the rebrand. Oh, so well, 20th they, they century Fox. Out, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've just, yeah, I've just gone into it. This uh, As uh, BBC News, 20, Disney ends historic 20th century Fox brand. Wow. Wow. Uh, my oh, that. that's a real shame. I hate the fact that Disney are taking over everything. I don't like that. I mean, I always like rival firms and stuff, but they're, they're just taking... I mean, <coughs> you know, that's a shame. I think that's a real shame. I'm quite excited. Uh, some more news. Uh, Wonder Woman Linda Carter comes to Blu-ray. Oh, good! I like to be yeah, in the car. Very excited about yeah, this. Just that'd been be announced good. today. That'd be good. Uh, Warner Brothers Home Entertainment sent over details on the Wonder Woman complete collection coming to Blu-ray on 
July 28, 2020. The details include that all 59 starring Linda Carter have been remastered for Blu-ray. Wow. Right, I'm definitely buying that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've got to get that. I'm a big fan of I've been, um, I've been watching High Def Quantum Leap recently. Oh, the picture's so awesome. And it's... Yeah, I've got that. Oh, it's God. And, and the, 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 honestly, the, the, the way that they actually filmed it and they remastered it is brilliant. It just looks so good. And it's so... I love that series because every week it just goes somewhere different and it's it's awesome. I love Blu-ray stuff. Um, and like uh, said, uh, it's great. Doctor Strange. And uh, here we go. Hashtag Marvel Virgin. Okay, go for it. I'll leave, I'll let you completely run this uh, this topic. Okay, Doctor Strange in the multiverse of mad po- madness poster fan poster teases Loki's return. Okay. Yeah, well, he's coming back anyways in the TV series. So I mean, it, it's I don't know why it's not really new. So we'll move so on to be this week's okay. UFO sighting. Please, what have you got this week? Uh, do, uh, last year, uh, several Chinese airports got shut down because there was a UFO hanging around the airports. And uh, here is the UFO that shut down the Chinese International Airport video. Right. So they've got, uh, they've got, I've got it now in front of me. Uh, it's uh, look, ABC News. Uh, yeah, there's pictures of it. So. There's, uh, they've got pictures of the UFO. Cause it was uh, a lot of Chinese airports got shut down in Beijing and that because there was something hovering uh, over the uh, airports, blocking um, all the planes. If you could do me a favour, if you could actually maybe put a link of that on your Twitter account and then I'll, I'll retweet it on the Solo One at Solo One Pod on Twitter, so everyone, if they yes. listen to this, they can actually give a look at that. If you don't, yeah, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, I'm looking for the share button, and there doesn't seem to be anything there, but I will find it. Just do, it. just yeah, or, or do um, do print screen, open Paint, and then paste it into Paint. Cut the edges off, file save as JPEG, and upload it that way. Right, I'm going to pretend you understood <laughs> everything. <laughs> so I know about graphic design. It's very yeah. Sorry, I'm talking a bit. Um, Bit graphically, there's a very, there's a way you can go. Right. Go. <laughs> I'll just pretend to understand. This this podcast contains graphic content. There we go. How about yes. that? All right. Anything else on the news? No, that's the news. Uh, we've covered everything. Yeah, I mean, that, the big surprise is the 20th Century Fox one this week. I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I'm, I'm sad to see it. I'm sad to see it going. That's that's a real shame, because I always think of the uh, the Star Wars, uh, especially the before the, the, the three new ones, having the 20th Century, and Alien as well. I mean, that was on that one. And, I, and there's so many films, and I think they... No, they didn't do, they didn't do The Matrix. That's Warner Brothers. Yeah, anyway, it's a shame. So, um, like I said... Um, Time moves on, and again, it's one of those weird kind of only in 2020 would 20th Century Fox be, which is of course 20 again, so maybe that's an apt time for it to. I don't know, I'm rambling. Okay, Martin, um, thank you for that. That's that's certainly interesting to, to learn. Let's go into our focus of the week for this week. Here we go. It's the Solar Sci Fi Focus of the Week. Okay, this week we are going into a series uh, which um, has... I've seen three different versions of this. Um, There was a 1960s film with Howard Keel. There was a 1980s version with John Dutine. And there was a um, 2009, I think it was, with Eddie Izzard. Um, We are focusing on, I think that most people would agree, the best version of this story by John Wyndham, which, of course, is the 1981 version. Um, Let's ask you first, Martin, what did you think about it and how did you hear about it and um, what did you think? Well, I I turned my computer on. It was all there mysteriously (laughs) from nowhere. And uh, I I, 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 I binged it. What, back in 1980s? Back in the 1980s? No, not back in 1980s. I was going to say, you had a good computer, didn't you? I've not seen it since 1980, but I watched it recently with a friend, actually. Right. At two o'clock in the morning, we watched this. And... uh, we couldn't turn it out. Absolutely spectacular. And for some reason, half an hour just seemed just right for each episode. Well, there's two different formats. There is, um, uh, there's one where it's three episodes of 45 minutes, 
And there's oh, also right, okay. yeah, yeah. There's two different there, yeah. Because some of it, the one I've got is the uh, three or forty-five minutes ones. It's the same, obviously, same length. It's just that they cut it up slightly differently. Um, I I loved it too, but you because I've seen it quite regularly. I must have seen Day of the Triffids uh, about twenty times over the years. The whole series, every one or two, two or three years, I delve into <laughs> it again and, and watch it. And it's one of my all-time favourite. Uh, apocalyptic sort of series very like survivors which we've already covered um so um seeing it after a long gap that you've mentioned it, did it still stand up well um from i thought it stand i thought, to be honest i thought it stood up perfectly yeah it, i did yeah well. i did too it, 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 it ran there weren't a lot of special effects in it but it was the didn't it, need what it. Was it didn't need it, it. it was it the need survival it. yeah of the situation of people that could see and, and the human race. And now the human population was sort of dealing with this. That's right. Uh, I thought, I mean, I love the characters. Uh, like him, it was the colonel. Uh, 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 I, 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 the logic of his plan was just ridiculous. Yes, yes. Uh, um, but I could say the, I say that he, he thought he was trying to do the right thing. But you could understand why he was doing what he was doing, but it didn't obviously didn't go right. Um, but um, I think, from my perspective, of course, the main issue with this version of the Triffids um, was not actually the Triffids themselves. They were actually a minor factor. It was the fact that the ninety nine percent of the world had been ploughed into blindness. Um, yeah, and it was very clever. I found that's what was more, was more disturbing the because, in the end. And it's, it's very clever, because in episode two, there's one bit where you see a blind man walking around with his stick. And, of course, although it didn't focus, it's just one scene you just see him for a second, look, sort of not looking around, but aware of it being quiet and different. He's already going to have an advantage. Um, but, I mean, I, I've been podcasting for a number of years, and, of course, my friend in America, Ivan, uh, Ivan in uh, Los Angeles, he's blind. And, of course, um, yeah. I learned so much about how... Um, uh, the visually impaired have to interact with the world and how they learn things. And even now, technologically, we've got a lot more advantages. I mean, he's got a phone where he can ring up somebody. This is service where literally he can walk along and they'll guide him with his phone and say, like, uh, there's, a, there's a door coming, be aware of this, this, things like that. And obviously you have guide dogs which were around back in the 70s. But, you know, if he were thrown into blindness as a society... Um, it would cause chaos, which is what made this series so disturbing. The, 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 the 2009 version was shite. It didn't focus on that at all. It was just a gimmicky kind of... It just felt crap, I thought. I, lo- I, 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 I mean, well, obviously we'll go into that in a minute, but the, uh, the, the 1980s one, I agree with everything you've just said. It wasn't about the Triffids. It was about the actual uh, loss of that ability, which is something which is, of course, so universally used by us as humans. Um, and, of yeah. course, this small kind of very, very lucky people who were either um, ill or un- uh, like in submarines under the sea or whatever, they didn't see the meteors. Which, in this is interesting, because in this version, they didn't say that they were the seeds of the Triffids. This was also different. In the other versions, the meteor storm was the Triffids coming in from space, and their flare is what blinds people. In this version, it was something to do with some special labs creating this. <laughs> in creating Russia, which in I Russia. found quite interesting. Yeah, I thought that was a great interesting twist as well. So originally, was were the uh, Triffids from the, uh, in the book then? Was, I've not read the books in years. I did read, read the sequel book that was made yet. But this is all like years ago. Sure. So in the book, the original book, did the Triffids come from space then? Uh, yeah, I th- I'm pretty much sure they they came from space. Okay. Um, and they did, well, I don't know because I've not read the book. But I mean, the Howard Keel version, they definitely were. I'm not sure. So if someone has read right. that, but I from what I've understood, and I might be completely wrong, I thought that they were sp- from space, a bit like uh, like the pods from Invasion of Body Snatchers. Uh, and their flair, obviously, their advantage is, of course, if you've got... They, they, uh, they're obviously car- cannibals, not kind of carnivores, um, but they, they, need, um, they need an advantage over humans. And, of course, if you can't see a triffid, they've got the sting. And all they yeah. do is ca- get you with a sting, they kill you, and they literally sit on top of you waiting for you to decay, and then they'll absorb yeah, your... Yeah, that's what I found really creepy. I, I thought about. that was really... I mean, they, they could just stay there. Yeah. That, that when they kill you... 
they, one or two of them, they'll just wait until your body decomposes. And then they'll absorb you. Yeah, like uh, Joe's dad. That's what was happening with Joe's dad. And that really, that was quite scary, that one. That it really was. bothered me, didn't yeah, that? That it was, was one thing, because I thought, these things, and I like the thing where he kept saying that, you know, that there's some kind of intelligence with them as well. Absolutely. Um, and the thing is, um, the, the way that they, they, they knocked their stumps, they thought it was some sort of um, way of communicating, like a sort of like a Morse code or something. Just certain, well, you know what I mean? Some, they, they had some consciousness, even though they didn't have a specific brain. Um, yeah. But um, I, I think there was still a lot of mystery to the Triffids. Um, but it made them, even though they're in a quite a diminished capacity, really, apart from the last episode uh, where we see loads of them. Um, I didn't mind that. I thought. That, I think when we saw them, they were great. They were creepy. I also thought the design of the eighties Triffids was very good. Um, stood up very well, um, and I just thought they were. Re- I just think everything about the series. The music was as scary as fuck. Um, and the opening yeah. credits. The opening credits were the stuff of nightmares. Do you know of. they're some of the best opening credits I've, I've ever seen. seen? And the music. That sort of yeah. way, that sort of wailing kind of uh, the way. That, well, it's, it's, it's just so good. Like, it's so good. It's everybody. It's everybody looking up as well. Uh, yeah, and there's this weird sort of green tinge, and they're looking up at the. Yeah. Obviously, what it is is them looking at the night of the meteors, seeing that they, they're coming down. They're looking at it, thinking, oh, "What's that?" And of course you'll know that they're looking at that because they're going to be blinded. And it's like Dr. Soames, when he, he, he sees it, it's, cl- it's clever because you have a flashback. And I like the way it starts off with him, like with a tape recorder saying, oh, I'm in hospital, I'm going to get uh, my bandages off in another hour. And then he hears the ding of the bell, and then um, he thinks, oh, it's, re- it's really quiet outside, it must still be night time. And then he hears the bell, and it's 8 o'clock, and he says, hey, it's 8 o'clock. Where is everybody? Why is it so quiet? I love it. I, honestly. I mean, you look at Tiffids and you see a zombie movie. Oh, that's more than that. More than yeah, that. Yeah, that's just one aspect. Then you could see that it could be an alien invasion with the, with the comics that have been put there it's to got do bits, that. It's got bits of stuff all mixed together. It's, it's that's what com- I mean. It's like yeah, a new you, formula. There's like numerous things in this which you could extrapolate into... I think the one let down of Day of the Tiffids for me that I, it should have got a season two. Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to, this week, if you don't mind, when we come to Cancelled Nate, it's here to stay. Yes. I, want, I want to talk about that. That could be our topic of this. We've never done both on the same show, but I think we'll do that. Yes. So, yeah, we'll go on to that at the end. But, yeah, season two yeah, definitely. definitely would have been interesting. Um, but going into the source material of what they did with season one, um, did you like the fact that the last episode jumped ahead about two years or something? So when they're kind of... Yeah, I did. I, I did quite like that. I think there was enough... Epi- I think... The, what makes uh, the original series a classic is, is I think it's set right. At the time frame, yeah. all of it, it's just set right. And uh, two years uh, ahead, I quite like that. The bit I liked was that they kept going on about this alliance down somewhere in southeast of, uh, southwest of Britain. Yes. It was the new capital, and they turned up. And they were I, yeah. putting all the blind to work and that, but it was a basically was a fiefdom dictatorial thing. Except them had moved to the what's the Isle of Man or the Isle of uh, White? The Isle of White, which is right near me. So it was interesting yeah. that um, they're all, they were actually coming down to Portsmouth on the last episode. <laughs> yes. Say, well, just go around it. Just get to the Isle of Wight. Don't worry about stopping it. And, <laughs> and then they they turned up and they said, "Look, you, we want you to grow food and run work for us." Yes, you'll be part and, of part and, of the community, and you can have a, a number of. Um, what did they say they did with the blind? The blind were sort of like labourers or something, weren't they? What were they yeah, going to do with the blind? Well, so they dropped them in basically, didn't they? they? They just put them to use, didn't they? Until they all died off. Yeah. And, uh, and and in the end, he lets all the triffids in, and you know, which I found were quite were quite, quite ruthless. Yeah, for quite him to do because he, he wasn't puts... that type of person. No, and but that, he was being that pushed. Changed. He was being pushed, I mean, and he put he put honey in the tank to stop this so they couldn't catch up. Um, and yeah. I, and it was it was good because I liked also the dynamic between your uh, the actress who plays Joe, of course you you know of you take Joe just married to a friend. Yeah, that's I? right, that's right. Uh, but I like I, I think also one thing that really makes this show works is the dynamic between Bill and Joe. Um, they had a real chemistry on on the show. Um, and and it and it sort of stood out, you know. These people really loved each other, and then they were separated. Where at one point he was having to assist um, with, I think his name was Co- Coca, um, was yeah. the guy that um, made um, sighted people 
try to be in charge of like 15 blind people and get them housed and get them fed and get and and, and, you, and of course coca was just trying to do the right thing but it all went wrong and then yes, you had the, this the outbreak of the disease again which killed off other characters and it was just so good there's so much to talk um, about uh, this series. It's, it's at least four different science fiction concepts put into one it's thing. like a cooking pot of sci-fi yeah. and it's and it's sort of in a, in a sort of like a, and it's mixed together and then you're given this thing and uh, yeah I've never forgotten it. I, I, like I said, um, you know, there wasn't a great deal of sci-fi on the BBC in the 80s that I remember, apart no, from the usual... Was, uh, that, that was the years when there was the sci-fi. Well, the 81 was brilliant, because the, in 81 you had the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you had the Day of the Triffids, you had Peter Davison's Doctor Who. I was happy. I had a lot of good stuff in 1981. Uh, v. V was 83, but yeah, obviously American... Yeah, V was brilliant, and of course, um, V, the final battle, and then the... the yeah, um, mid-80s had quite a lot of stuff like that. And of course, at that point, we'd had the first Star Wars as well. But um, I, I do think that, uh, like I said, when you think back on it, there's so many scenes and so many bits you forget about. I mean, like I said, that like I like the fact that... Um, and one thing I wondered is how... By the end of the series, I wonder how many blind people are still alive. How many of them would have been killed either by an accident or by the Triffids or not being able to find food, starvation? You know, because on the Isle of Wight, they had this this sort of community, didn't they? And this yeah, is what... Was, this is, it was mixed, wasn't it? It worked what, together. I yeah. mean, you're going to have to... You need blind people because if you're going to get the human race back... I mean, uh, you're going to reproduction. reproduction born, yeah, yeah, exactly. Blind, yeah, they? exactly. Reproduction and stuff like that. Um, and But there was also... A, there was a death that came there, sort of like... Um, uh, a, a, a disease that came in as well. It killed off quite a few people as well. It killed up. There was like a commune with um, some people in episode one or two. They wanted to start off their own community, and then um, they went back, and they're all dead, weren't they? Do you remember that bit? And he said, "There's you could smell the disease. It's in the air." Yeah. So, it, but it didn't elaborate much to what that was, whether that well, was something... Yeah, but that's, that's the thing. If society broke down, it won't be long before that started. So it could have been just like a natural... to get out of the cities by that time. Yeah, I mean, it could have just been a natural byproduct and stuff like that. Yeah, um, Yeah, so an excellent series. Um, do you think it went on long enough? I mean, we're, talk we're going to talk in, in the next uh, segment about it, but... <sighs> Are you are you pleased it went just then, or do you think it should want, have gone for second after, season? Because I watched it recently. After I watched it, I want, I, want, I could have seen myself putting season two on straight after. That's yeah. where I think. Oh, well, that's that's all I can say on that. I wanted more because it would have been into. I love the characters that but, much. But I mean, at the end of this scene, they, they the series, they said because in the Isle of Wight, they were far enough from the mainland, um, and they said that Triffid seeds used to blow over every spring and every spring they used to just kill off the seeds so they're like a have a seasonal kind of um stopping them from growing and stuff like that well there was a sequel book and i think i read i read it years ago there was what did that involve book. what did that involve oh I, I think there was there was a lot more about the suffids i'm trying to remember it I, there was a sequel book that was written it wasn't written by him it was somebody else because he, he somebody else took it on it was like the guy who uh, wrote Time Machine. He wrote a sequel to it and made a complete balls up of it. Well, John Wyndham did the original one, so I don't know who... Yeah, ever... I think it might have been one of his relatives. But there oh, was... yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I've never even heard yes. of it. Uh, never heard of it. No, I remember putting it down. I wasn't that interested in it. No, I mean, I mean let's quickly um, elaborate on the other two versions as well. I mean, I know it's the main focus of the 81 version. So, did you like the How Kill version? I, with, with the submarine at end. Yeah. Yeah, I quite liked it. Yeah, it's the nineteen fifties movie. Yeah, it's a B movie. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I think it, it was pretty it's good. okay. It's, it's of its time. It, it, I mean, it, it, that yeah. had some great disturbing. Well, not great, but it had some good, some disturbing scenes. There was yes. one where they're in an aeroplane and they're blind. They've gone blind. They can't land the plane. And he's and he's radioing the the, um, the airport saying, "Please guide us down. Please guide us down." And then of course it plummets into a, a naval base. And then there's also another one where there's a steam train. Again, they can't. They don't know where the end of the track is, and it ploughs into uh, like um, Victoria Station or something. And then all the people um, come off the spilling off the train, and lot. It, there were some. There were some pretty dramatic scenes in that one. And of course, that one also has a separate um, story, which is completely isolated, with these two people stuck in a lighthouse. 
And of course, in that version, which they didn't do in the end of the 81 version, they discovered that the Achilles heel for killing off the Triffids is salt water. And that's what kills them off. You s- God, I remember that. Ah, you just yeah, exactly. Me a memory flash. Right. Now, yeah. It was salt wa- water that kills off the Triffids. It just literally just <coughs> completely ruins them. They just turn into mush. That was never, and a cure was never um, acknowledged in the 81 version. And I don't mind that. But I was, I, I seem to remember, vaguely remember, even when I was young, that I must have seen the How I Kill version first because I wondered at the end of the 81 version why they just went off in their car, off their way to Isle of Wight, and they, there wasn't a cure. They just said, we will fight them and we will find a way to win or something like that. So, um, but I thought that was interesting. Uh, but also, the Eddie is... Now, we have both been quite negative about the like, the recent War of the Worlds oh, wow. remake. Wow. So, um uh, survivors they remade that i like the survivors remake but they also um which of course is similar to the triffids and that's why i think that we'll talk about this in a minute i think that the second series might have been a lot more like survivors than the first series of the triffids yes um, that's where i did it? but the third uh the third version with what what the hell was that about i mean did you we, we want to go too I much about it go on got very excited about that when i found out they'd remade it because they did a few... The BBC covered a couple of things that year. There were, I think yeah. there were three. Yeah. They did A for Andromeda, which I will have to say was very good. Never seen that. It's worth a look. Okay. Uh, from, based from 60s one. And the, they did uh, uh, Quatermass, the one with the vegetable monster. Right, yeah. And the best that I mean, they just screwed it up. Uh, but the remake of Day of the Triffids... Uh, it's, I, it was in two parts, wasn't it? Like yeah, a, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just, mind me long, it was just crap. It was just a mess, and wasn't it? What would it, Eddie is that point in it? He would have, what was ridiculous? What, what, oh, I was him watching, on the plane. The but, plane <laughs> I just going to say this, yeah. He puts a load of um, bags around him or something to protect him and he comes out of the plane's in wrecked and he gets out of it. He hasn't even got a scratch on him. Yeah, and then he's, he's like this international... He becomes like some kind of interna- international gangster. He's like... Oh. He becomes this like enforcer. And, and he wants... You know, and, and, and there's no history of his character. You know, he's on the run from somewhere. And it, 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 like a lot of the focus was on him. Yeah, I know. As well, and I like Eddie, is it? I think he's a great actor. I think he's funny. Well, he didn't but work it, in this at all. He didn't work. He was just a just a. No, he didn't. He was like he was like a fish out of water in this, and I and I think because a lot of people panned him in that, you know, and it, it, it's it, 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 the, the focus should have been on the original two two characters who were there, the, but not they were the they, yeah they weren't focused him, yeah they weren't so focused on them on three yeah but it was all on him taking you know over trying to take over and all this it was. I just found it pointless. We watched, after we watched the sixth episode, we watched the first half of the uh, movie. It was on YouTube. Uh, we just, I couldn't, we couldn't be bothered with it, honestly. No, I don't it was, After watching Class as the 80s one, it, that was just a, it was an insult. It me, was, it yeah, it was an insult. It just, and it just makes the 80s one just look so much better. I mean, it, it just, to me, it's a, it's a classic. It's It's a... Classic the, 80s series. They um, gave yeah. the Triffids tentacles in the uh, the, the modern one. They were CGI. They were CGI, and they just looked. It, well, they were terrible CGI. It was yeah. terrible CGI. Yeah, well, I, but they, I, I remember seeing an outline of them in smoke, which looks all quite good. They look quite alien, which I found that. I mean, it's I, got yeah, smoke. there were some scenes where they were certainly. Yeah, I, I can see that as well. Yeah, but it was certain certain scenes where they were up close. They looked terrible. They just looked like the cartoon. It looks awful. Yes. yes. Um, so, um, yeah, so I just wanted to sort of briefly um, focus on the 90s, although the, this is obviously the 80s version. So, um, yeah, out of all the versions, like I said, um, it's definitely 80s first, late 50s, early 61 second, and the um, 2009 version, which is a very, very far behind third. Yeah, but, but, but what I'm saying, it's like, it's like we're, we're going to have to cover Sapphire and Steel at some point. But Oh, that's one of the about... weirdest things I've ever seen, Sapphire and Steel. Yeah, there's something about 
stuff back then that they didn't have a big budget, but no, they made no, it effective. I know, I know. And they can't do that today. They can't well, a lot of people, I it. mean, a lot of people have a real issue with Doctor Who and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of people, like my family, they don't watch the old Doctor Who's, they watch the new Doctor Who's. And I said, well, that's yes, fantastic yeah. stories of the, of the 70s and 80s and 60s, 60s, 70s and 80s, the whole era. Um, and uh, the, the, the monster looks cheap. Well, it doesn't matter. It's about no. the ideas of what, it, you know, it, you can. I'm, I'm not that bold. I mean, there are sort of levels of cheesiness where I think, yeah, okay, this is a bit much. But I, I don't know. I mean, it annoys me because people are missing out on, on a lot of classic stuff and a lot yeah, of times the, remakes are not, not as good. Yeah, but it's like Sapphire and Steel and Blake 7. They were all out at the same time. They didn't have big budgets, but the acting... But they, they did it, they, they and did the acting story and the, story, the writing and the acting. It, and that's so what it made up for it. So you sidetrack the special effects. You think, yeah, right, they're trying, but the story's more interesting. Yeah, exactly. And the act, it's convincing, no, and that's know, what I like. I know, I know. And it's also just the feel of the era, I think. That's just, I think both of us are quite a, a sort of um, you know, into that part of the um, time that these things were made. Well, look, um, I think we'll wrap up now with this um, this uh, analysis or review uh, or focus. But, yeah, Dad of Triffids, 81, a real classic. I'm really glad that you liked it as much as I did. Uh, it was a real pleasure to watch, and I briefly say, I think I mentioned last week, that the Blu-ray copy is coming out very soon. I think it's next yes. month. Um, I will certainly get it. If I hear that the quality is good, I will get it. If it's going to be like Red Dwarf, which was remastered, which I thought was really quite bad, then I'll stick with my 480p version. But, Martin, thank you for that. Great series. And we're going to do something different this week. We are now going into a link on cancelled nay it's here to stay talking about series two of the day of the triffids if it had been made let's hit the jingle and see where it goes here we go cancelled nay it's here to stay (laughs) all right so um we've talked about this obviously before but the one thing which this series has a parallel with is survivors um it would have been some factors if they had made a season two because of course um they have got to do similar things they have got to have um basics things like food water um and all the things involved with uh in the community do you think the triffids would have been a problem in season two what do you think they would have done (coughs) I, I think it would have been very much... I'd say season two and three would, would have been like Survivors, but I'd have had something bigger in the background going on. Right, what do you think that might have involved? Do you think a government thing or, or something to do with the Triffids themselves? I'd, I'd like to take it up a level, but I don't know if you'll agree with it. Yeah, go for it. I'd say that the comic thing was... It was done deliberately by something outside... Well, some people said that in the original that it was done deliberately um, and it was a way yeah. of gaining power. It could have been that, I mean, because again, it's a, a bit of time afterwards, there might have been some new, uh, whether it's an alien agenda or as it may be, what if the Triffids were part of a different alien organisation or something where they were like um, uh, a foothold kind of thing, like a first contact thing before the really bad guys come in or something to take over terraforming i know we've seen this in other shows but it could have been interesting the way they went or whether maybe there was a new version of triffids who are more deadly or maybe they wouldn't they were more like fire resistance and stuff like that or they grew faster or you know there are certain things they could have done um but i think really you know i think one reason why it wasn't continued partly because it was only based on the original book is that it would have been getting more into survivors' territory, i.e. different organisations um, wanting their own territories, some aggressive, some looking to, to share their commodities, trade, and things like that, which is really what the way the, tra- uh, the survivors went. So, you know, like I said, it may have been that it was best that it just stayed for the one season. But I'd be interested, though. I mean, I'd like to have seen the season two. I, I, I think you could have took this a lot because there's so much you could there's so many things that have gone into this like from a zombie apocalypse to a, yeah, yeah. a government conspiracy like in the uh, TV show in the 80s said it might have been governments and satellites in orbit there could have been some group on earth that planned this yeah and they created the Triffid this was all part of some plan and by the third season these people appear 
and uh, they have a way of wiping out that you could bring in the salt water thing that kills off the trifid infestation uh, but it's like this group within a group that's going to try and take over the world or you could even go as far as a, an extraterrestrial alien invasion this is how they do it yeah exactly you know, and you could have but you don't bring this in until the later season you start leaving easter eggs to something much bigger oh, and, um, uh, yeah. and you start going there with the with the survivors twist of each week and i i really think you could have had something wonderful i really don't um <laughs> it could have been some kind of like intelligence that farms worlds it, it, it's like plant-based life form that kills off like living organic life it kills it or it moves from world to world plants its own it's like a like a a, a hive mind of the of daffodils not daffodils a, a plant in, intelligence yes yeah 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 i know what you're saying and you could have tied it into quite a it's something to do with that talking of tying in one idea i thought of what about if the 2009 version they could have completely they could have done it as a continuation that would have been awesome that's where you could now have why gone they they could have done that because it would have been in real time and the original was well enough they could even have done the triffids so they they resembled they could have still done the cgi but they still resembled the basic shape of the 80s version um they could have even they could have even had bill well i could have had i don't know if eddie Izzard's character would have been in it but they, they i i don't know whether that might have given it more strength if it but then i suppose the bbc might have thought well look you know this is a, a show from 20 years ago 25 years ago whatever it was um and people won't remember it us who would have remembered it well but, you know what i mean how well remembered would it have been from the 80s version well if you want to go like really out there with it yeah, and, and type it into the BBC universe what you could do is you could type there was quite a massive TV series and in the first one it was a vegetable life form uh, plant life form right. that took over the astronaut from out of space and then and you could tie it into that this is their other attempt now yeah yeah you okay. know and, and you could take it from there if you and this is all within because to me the BBC sci-fi universe is all one big place yeah, well, that's I'm fair enough, gonna, yeah. I'm bring the dots in it. That's... No, no, I, no, I don't know. No, 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 no. Let's leave the dots in. we've had their voice in Doctor Who. But where are masks going to be around? Oh, unless you had the... Where are masks Ah, what about the bird voice from Doctor Who? They're Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> they're plants. They're humanoid I'm plants. I'm not, no. Right? Oh, okay. no, no, you said, you said no. about the same... No, 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 no. You no, said... I think you could... I mean, they, it could be like... There could be like... This is how they do it. They're sending the well, they, they, they sort of like these seeds appeared and we're extracting them for all, but it's all part of the plan. But it takes time. It takes a couple of decades, and yeah, then yeah. they come, they arrive. Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's the, the time issue. When they made the 2009 version, it would have been really about the, about the right perfect time where humanity, although it still survived, it's a very diminished state in those yeah. in those 18 years. <laughs> um, you know, since then, you know what I mean. Actually, it's the more than that. It's, the, it's 28, 28, 28, 30 years, 28 years. Yeah. But it could be really interesting. Out, yeah, exactly. Because there's a certain Bernard Quatermass who's figured it all oh, wow. <laughs> He's alive. Oh, uh, okay. Research place. Right. And could they say, I'm on it. He's tied into the BBC universe. And Quatermass could be around. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It could have been good. I know. Well, I mean, um, in the end, it only made one season. Uh, yes. And it certainly is a classic. I'm glad, though, that, um, you know, you've given it a recent... It was actually interesting because I mentioned to you last week that I was thinking about doing a show. And then you said, I only watched it the other day or something. And it was like, yeah, what's the chance of that? Both watching the same thing or thinking about the same series at the same time. Um, but, yeah, it certainly is a classic. Um, it's, it's definitely a show I'm always going to keep. I'm really looking forward to the, the remastered version, see how well that's done. Um, yeah, bring it on, I'd say. Um, and what we'll do is, we'll, we'll if, if one of us gets a copy of it, um, we'll talk about it in, in future shows just to see how good it is in comparison to the original one. Maybe it'll have some great bonus features or stuff, or even extended scenes, and maybe they can get some extra stuff on there. Uh, but yeah, brilliant, Martin. Um, okay, so is there anything else before we wrap up this, uh, this segment? I think we're just about done, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I think we're done on this section now, yes. Brilliant, okay, mate. Uh, well, thank you for that. Well, I, I think that's that's pretty much it for the show, unless there's anything else before we finish today? 
Anything else you want to share with uh, the world? No, I will be doing a live show Sunday at 5 o'clock. Right. Uh, at 5 o'clock on Sunday, yeah. Okay, but I'll try and tune into that. Yes. I don't always, sometimes I miss them, but um, if not, I normally see the, the replay on the stream. So, uh, um, that's on Martin's Sci Fi Appeal. So. Yeah, and obviously yep. you can check out his YouTube channel, it's really good. Um, and anything you're going to be particularly focusing on this week on your show? Uh, I don't know yet. Just going to sort of I, go with it. I, I just go with it. I, I, there haven't been much to <coughs> really uh, focus on this week, really. It's, no, it's fine. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, like I said, you're always very good at um, uh, in this. There's a nice, you've got a nice community of people that you sort of um, uh, always come back, and I, I know yes. some of them myself. So it's nice you've got that. So um, yeah, I'll be tuning in. Hopefully, it'll be a good one um, tonight. So well, today's show, I'm going to end with a really odd one. Um, now you mentioned that obviously zombies, which technically is a sci-fi thing, a zombie. Oh, definitely. Right. Yeah, definitely. Do you remember the little kid about ten years ago? He was dressed up as a zombie. And a, a newscaster says, well, what are you going to be doing for Halloween? He just gives a really blank look, and he just says, I like turtles. Did you ever see this? What? It's the most weird. It, it, got, it got about... Oh, God. It got about... It's so inconsequential, it's going to do my head in. It, Go got, it got about, uh, I think, about 20 million views on YouTube. And this kid goes, I like turtles. And everyone's seen it. I'm surprised you've not heard about it. Anyway, the other day, I came across a, a musical remix of this kid going, I like oh. turtles. And I thought that tonight or today, we might as well finish the show with something a bit out there because sci-fi can sometimes be a little bit out there. So enjoy this. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, do you want to focus on... I thought about doing reviewing The Mist. Do you want to do The Mist next week? I've not seen The Mist. Oh, well, we can't do it. All right, well, I'll get you a copy of that. All right, okay. I have, uh, I've got a... a Somebody's going to lend me the silent place, is it? The silent place, is it? The, uh, that where you can't make a noise. Oh, bird box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you can't. Yeah, I always get family. that one mixed up. Yeah, yeah, another one. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got, I've got a copy that of that. This week. Well, I'll tell you what. If I also lend you um, the mist, um, then you can check that out as well, if you don't mind. So what we'll do is yeah, I'll, yeah, can, yeah. I'll reschedule. How about then next week we do <laughs> another big one? Oh, I tell you what, I don't think I, I don't know. Uh, Why don't we do Sapphire and Steel next week? I've not seen it yet. So I will do that, but it's, it, we've got to see that. I've only seen episodes about 30 years ago and it was terrifying. But I tell you what we'll do, if it's right with you, next week we'll do Jeff Goldblum's The Fly. <coughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, or nay, or The Focus, because we did fly last week, didn't we? No, we've not done it as a focus of a series. We haven't done that. Right, okay. That so we'll do good. the fly, and then uh, maybe the week after that we can also do Star Trek. We'll actually do a Star Trek series, maybe Discovery or something. We'll talk about that. <coughs> yeah, let's do uh, Voyager, actually. All right, I'll let you choose, because I've done all the graphics for all the Star Trek. So, um, yes, uh, well, very, old, very impressed with what you sent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love doing it. I've done all this, so they're all ready to go. I was going to share them, but they didn't have episode numbers on, so I thought I'd better leave Well, uh, yeah, the only reason is because I don't know, always know when they actually are going to be done, yeah, so I leave the number thought, blank, yeah. so that's fine. All right, so next week is The Fly, and then a the week after it's Voyager, which I'll, that's going to be a really good one. Thank you, Martin. We're going to leave you with the I Like Turtles right Kid, and we'll catch you next week on the Sofa <laughs> One <laughs> Sci-Fi <laughs> Podcast. I like catch you later. All right, take care. I like, 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 I